Grace and peace, my brothers and sisters, grace and peace. My name is Brother Yehuda, and today's topic is Christ, the true bread of heaven. Christ welcome all that come to him, that come to Christ. Necessity of feeding upon Christ. Now we're gonna I'm gonna read the scripture from St. John chapter 6, verse 28, all the way to 59. I hope you have your Bibles with you. Because it's best to follow in so this way you get a better understanding and you can see it yourself. Don't take my word for it. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him who he has sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign showeth thou then that we may see and believe thee? What does thy work? Our father did eat manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. We're going to go over all this that I'm reading to you. So just bear with me with the reading and just follow in if you've got your Bibles out. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then say they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I say unto you, that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me. That every one which seeth the Son and believe on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this man the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he said, I, can, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur, not among yourself. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that has heard and has learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man has seen the Father, said he which is of God, he has seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your father did eat, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto, ye, unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth and my flesh and drinketh my blood dwells in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me, this is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. This, these things said he in the synagogues as he taught in Capernaum. Now Christ is explaining 
he's explaining your methods and what's your duty to be pleasing to the father and he's explaining why is he sent down here so he's explaining that in in a nutshell he was plainly with this he wasn't using no parables or anything he was straightforward with them whether this conference was with the Capunanites in the in whose synagogue Christ now was or with those who came from the other side of the sea is not certain of material however it is an instant of crisis superiority that Christ gave them leave to ask him questions you know he gave him a chance to ask now is your chance to ask questions and did not resent the interruption as an affront no not from Christ's common hearers though not Christ's immediate followers those that would be apt to teach must be swift to hear so in other words you're willing to teach you got to be willing to listen and learn you can't just teach something that you just come up your own head and saying this is someone this is Christ's doctrine so you have to be of Christ And that in study, and they have to study to answer. It is the wisdom of teachers when they are asked even rude, unprofitable questions, then to take occasion to answer in that which is profitable. So in other words, even if it's a question that's rude and is you know you got to know how to answer with wisdom and knowledge, you don't have to come out them and bash them because they're actually a question that you didn't like. That the question may be rejected, but not the request. Now, Christ having told them that they must work for the meat, Christ spoke of, must labor of it. They inquired what work they must do, and Christ answered them. So, you know, a lot of people want to know what work do I have to do? Some people think they have to have Passover. Some people think they have to have ceremonial laws, sacrifices. Some people think they have to wear certain garments. Some people think they have to wear certain jewelry. Some people think they have to put smoke in the house, burn candles. Christ is answering to you when they, when they ask. What works they must do? And Christ answered them and said, In the book of John, chapter 6, verse 28 and 29, Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God, that ye believe on him who he has sent. Now, you, he's telling you that you have to believe in he who he has sent. He's got to believe in Christ, because Christ was sent by God. Their, their inquiries was relevant enough. John 6, 28. What shall we do that we may work for the works of God? Some understand it as a neat question. What works of God can we do more and better than those we do in obedience to the law of Moses but I rather take it as a humble serious question showing them to be at least for the present in a good mind and willing to know and do their duty and I imagine that those who ask this question how are what how and what in the book of John chapter 6 verse 30 they said therefore unto him what signs showeth thou then that we may see and believe thee what doeth thy work? That's in the book of John, chapter six, verse three and verse thirty. And made the request in the in the book of John, chapter six, verse thirty-four. Then said they unto him, Lord, forevermore, give us this bread. That's in the book of John, chapter six, verse thirty-four. They were not the same persons with those that murmured. In the book of John, chapter six, verse forty-one and forty-two. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he said, I came down from heaven? That's in the book of John, chapter 6, verse 41 and 42. And the people, a lot of people in this world today, they struggle with that. I was, he was just a regular man He didn't come down from heaven He's not the bread of life Why are you call him the savior? Because they're not understanding The spiritual journey The spiritual life Because we all in, this, in the gospel Is nothing but spiritual It's nothing worldly It's nothing fleshly It's all spiritual So when he said the bread Christ told him about himself When he said the drink He's talking about himself Get into the gospel That's how you be saved 
down as, and strove in the book of John chapter 6 verse 52. The Jews therefore strove among themselves saying how can this man give us his flesh to eat? And these are things that people question as opposed to just seeking the knowledge to understand it. For those are expressly called the Jews who came out of Judea. For those were strictly called Jews. And, and it is mainly like the Jews of today, with, of that's in the Bible, that will be of today's world, will be the so-called African American, the black men. Those are expressly called the Jews who came out of Judea from those who were strictly called Jews to cavil, whereas these were of Galilee and came to be taught. This question were intimates that they were convinced that those who would abstain this everlasting meat must aim to do something great. Those who look high in their expectations and hope to enjoy the glory of God must aim high in those endeavorous and study to do the works of God, works which God requires and will accept, accept works of God, distinguished from the works of worldly men in their worldly pursuits. It is not enough to speak the words of God, but we must do the works of God, must be willing to do anything we shall we do. We, sh we must be willing to do anything. What shall we do? The question. Lord, I am ready to do whatever you shall appoint, though ever so displeasing to flesh and blood. The book of Acts. We're going to go to the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 6. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. That's in the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 6. Christ's answer was plain enough in the book of John, chapter 6, verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him who he has sent simple as that that's in the book of john chapter 6 verse 29 this is the work of god that you believe the work of faith is the work of god they inquired after the works of god in the plural number they was being careful about many things but christ directs them to one work so it's not a it's not a nation it's not a group you have to come to christ and believe yourself which includes all the one thing needful that you believe which supersedes all the works of the ceremonial laws the works of which is necessary to the acceptance of all the other works and which proceeds the them from without faith you cannot please God it is God's work for it is of God working in us it subjects the soul to God's working on us and the quickens the soul in working for God that faith is the work of God which closes with Christ and relies upon Christ it is to believe on Christ as one whom God has sent as God's commissioner in the great affair of peace between God and man and that's what you want to have peace with God and man because you don't want to have to deal with the wrath of God because that's eternal so you want to have peace with God by coming to Christ and as such to rest upon Christ and to resign and resign ourselves to Christ we're gonna look in the book of John chapter 14 verse 1 let not your heart be troubled ye believe in God believe also in me plain and simple that's in the book of John chapter 14 verse 1 Christ having told them that the Son of Man would give them it's this me they inquired concerning Christ and Christ answered their inquiries inquiries the inquiries is after a sign in book of John chapter 6 verse 30 they said therefore unto him what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee what doeth thou work that's in the book of John chapter 6 verse 30 what signs show us thus far they were right that since Christ required them to give him credit Christ should produce his credentials and make it out by miracles that Christ was sent of God. Moses having confirmed his mission 
by signs. It was Moses having confirmed his mission by signs. It was requisite that Christ who came to set aside the ceremonial laws should in like manner confirm his. What is the work? What do we drive at? What lasting characters of a divine power do you design to leave upon your doctrine? But here they missed it, that they overlooked the many miracles which they had seen wrought by, by Christ and which amounted to an abundant proof of Christ's divine missions. Is this a time of day to ask what signs show us, especially at the Capernaum, the staple of miracles, where Christ had done so many mighty works, signs so significant of Christ's office and undertaking? Wasn't these same people that the other day miraculously fed by Christ? None so blind as that they would not see, for they may be so blind as to question whether it be day or, or no when the sun shine in their face, that they prefer the miraculous feeding of Israel in the wilderness before all the, the miracles Christ did. That's in the, we're going to go in the book of John, chapter 6, verse 31, just to clear that up, to, get, to, to understand that this is what's coming out the Bible. Our father did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 31. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. Well, when they say our fathers did eat manna in the desert, he's talking about when Moses had them in the desert, and Moses told them to sit there, there will be bread for them in the morning. And that's, that's, that's what we're talking about now. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, and to strengthen the objection, they quote a scripture for it. He gave them bread from heaven, taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 24, which reads, And had rained down manna upon them to eat, and had given them of the corn of heaven. That's in the book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 24. He gave them of the corn of heaven. What a good use of might be made of this story to which they here refer. It was a memorable instant of God's power and goodness often mentioned to the glory of God. We're going to go to the book of Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 20 and 21. Thou gavest also thy good spirit to instruct them and withheld them not thy manna from their mouth and gavest them water for their thirst. Ye forty years did it thou sustain them in the wilderness, so they so that they lacked nothing, their clothes waxed not cold, not old, and their feet swelled not. So they speaking of when God left them in the wilderness for forty years and they were just wandering around. And he said their clothes didn't get old and their shoes didn't get old. That's in the book of Nehemiah, chapter nine, verse twenty, verse two. But see, people forget that kind of stuff. They don't. They they as, as soon as another situation come about, they want to complain again. And this is what goes on in today's world. It's always something that's disturbing to a person. They just can't receive and be humble and patient with uh, with with the doctrine of Christ, with God Almighty. Yet, see how these people perverted it and made an ill use of it. Christ reproved them for their fondness of the miraculous bread and bade them not set their hearts upon meat which perish. Why, said they, meat from the belly was the great good thing that God gave to our fathers in the desert. And why should not we then labor for that meat? If God made much of them, why should not we be for those that will make much of us. So these people are asking questions again. Now Christ had fed 5,000 men with five loaves and had given them that as one sign to prove Christ was sent of God. But under color of magnifying and the miracles of Moses, they tactically undervalued this miracle of Christ and evade the evidence of it. Christ fed his thousands but Moses his hundreds 
but of the thousands Christ fed them but once and then rebuked those who followed him in hope to be still fed and put them off with a discourse of spiritual food but Moses fed his followers 40 years and miracles were not their rareness but their daily bread Christ fed them with bread out of the earth barley bread and fishes out of the sea but Moses fed Israel with bread from heaven angels food how big did these Jews talk of the manna which their fathers did eat but their fathers had slighted it as much as they did now the barley loaves of uh, and called light bread we're going to go in the book of numbers chapter 21 verse 5 and the people spake against God and against Moses wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness for there is no bread neither is there any water and our soul loath, loath it this light bread book of numbers chapter 21 verse 5 that's going to show you this is in the first five books of Moses the book of numbers this is going way back then in the ancient books how they murmured about something that didn't go their way which they're doing as we speak now how apt are we to slight and overlook the appearance of God's power and grace in our own times while we pretend to admire the wonders of which our father told us suppose this miracle of Christ was outdone by that of Moses yet there were other instances in which Christ's miracles outshone his and besides all true miracles prove a divine doctrine though not equally illustrates in the, the circumstances which were ever branched out according as the occasions did require as much as the manna excelled the barley loaves so much and much more did the doctrine of Christ excel the law of Moses so he's telling you that the, the doctrine of Christ excels the, the, the laws of Moses is much powerful and much better than the law of Moses but people are so stuck on Moses and they're not coming to Christ because Christ had power they can't believe the power that Christ had and his heavenly institution the carnal ordinances of that order here is Christ's rely to this inquiry wherein he rectifies their mistakes concerning the typical manna it was true that their fathers did eat manna in the desert but it was not Moses that gave it to them nor were they obliged to Moses for he was but the instrument and therefore they must look beyond Moses to God in order for them to get fed the bread from heaven we do not find that Moses did so much as pray to God for the manna and he spoke unadverse advisedly when he said must we fetch water out of the rock Moses gave them not either that bread or that water it was not given them as they imagined from heaven from the highest heavens but only from the clouds and therefore not so much superior to that which had it its rise from the earth as they thought because the scriptures said he gave them bread from heaven it does not follow that it was heavenly bread or was intended to be the nourishment of souls misunderstanding scripture language often many mistake in the things of God a lot of people do they mistake but it's about praying and asking for that knowledge and wisdom so he can spring the Holy Spirit upon you so you can receive that understanding so you won't make those mistakes you'll be fully you'll be fully learned in the scriptures and you understand Christ but you have to come to Christ in order for that to happen Christ informs them concerning the true manner of which that was a type but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven that which is truly and properly the bread from heaven of which the manna was but a shadow and figure is now giving not to your fathers who are dead and gone but to you of this present age for for whom the better things were reserved God is now giving you that bread from heaven which is Christ which is the truly so-called 
as much as the throne of God's glory is above the clouds of the air, so much does the spiritual bread of the everlasting gospel excels the manna and called God his father. Christ proclaims himself greater than Moses, for Moses was faithful, but as a servant, Christ as a son. We're going to go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant, true indeed, for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken of, spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. So we have to hold on to that hope and that, that belief and that trust to the end. Don't be some Tommy. Stick with Christ because he's the life. He's the way, the truth. He's the bread. He's the water. Christ, have, that's in the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Now Christ, having replied to their inquiry, inquiries, take further occasions from their objections concerning the manner to discourse of himself under the similitude of bread and of believing under the similitude of eating and drinking to which together with Christ putting both together in the eating of Christ's flesh and drinking of Christ's blood and with the remarks made upon it by their hearers the rest of this con con the rest of this conference may be reduced Christ having spoken of himself as the great gift of God and the true bread now you know you go to a Catholic church and they break bread they use the, the host and they pass it out to the people and they you know they give the, the wine it's supposed to, so they're making it seem like it is bread itself they don't under, they're not understanding and then you understand that the bread is the spiritual bread of Christ the, the, the water the bread and the blood is the spiritual blood of Christ once you put on Christ drinking his blood and eating his body you are in Christ because it's spiritual the spirit is within you so don't fall for the, the okie doke because you know you see it oh he's giving me the bread so i'm eating the bread so okay i'm christ is in me that's that's if you're going if you're not following christ and you're not believing in christ truly he's not in you now we're going to go in the book of john chapter 6 verse 32 then jesus said unto them verily verily i say unto you moses gave you not that bread from heaven but my father gave it you the true bread from heaven he gave you Christ. That's the true bread from heaven. That's in the book of John, chapter 6, verse 32. Largely explained and confirms this, that we may rightly know Christ. Christ here shows that he is the true bread. This Christ repeats again and again. In the book of John, chapter 6, 33 to, and 35, 48 and 51. He got to make this clear. Because a lot of people, is just they, it goes right over people's head because it's so spiritual. You have to have a spiritual mind. Stop looking at what men are ordained to do in this world by other men and look at what Christ is saying. The spiritual word, that's how you get the blessing. That's how you receive the peace through Christ. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. 34. Then said they unto him, Lord evermore give us this bread 35 and Jesus said unto them I am the bread of life he that come up to me shall never hunger and he that believeth on me shall never thirst so you don't need to do a practice here of giving you bread give you bread to eat and that's receive no you have to receive them within your heart you have to be pure and truthful with this we, we don't play no games with this this is the real the real spirit the, the real truth and the real life the real bread the everlasting bread the everlasting blood this is what this is what I'm talking about I am the 48 I am that bread of life 49 your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead 50 this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die 51 I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. That's chapter, John chapter 
verse chapter 6 verse 33 to 35 that Christ is bread is that to the soul which bread is to the body nourishes and supports the spiritual life is that is the staff of it as the bread does the, the bodily life it is the staff of life the doctrine of the gospel concerning Christ that Christ is the mediator between God and man that Christ is our peace our righteousness our Redeemer by these things do men live our bodies could be could better live with without food than our souls without Christ bread corn is bruised book of Isaiah chapter 28 verse 28 bread corn bread corn is bruised because he will not ever be threshing it nor break it with the wheel of his cart nor bruise it with his horsemen that's in the book of Isaiah chapter 28 verse 28 so was Christ Christ was born at Bethlehem the house of bread and typically by the show bread so in other words like when Christ is from Bethlehem they got Christ as Jesus of Nazareth but Jesus was not Mary and Joseph is from Nazareth Christ is from Bethlehem that means the house of bread or the show bread that Christ is the bread of God we're gonna to go to the book of John chapter 6 verse 33 for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world that's in the book of John chapter 6 verse 33 divine bread it is Christ that is of God you're gonna to go to the book of chapter of John chapter 6 verse 46 not that any man has seen the father save he which is of God he has seen the father that's in the book of John chapter 6 verse 46 bread which my father giveth John chapter 6 verse 32 then Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you Moses gave you that not that bread from heaven but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven that's in the book of John chapter 6 verse 32 which God has made to be the food of our souls, the bread of God's family, God's children, bread. The Levitical sacrifices are called the bread of God. We're going to go to the book of Le Leviticus, chapter 21, verse 21 to 22. No man has a blemish of the seed of Aaron. The priest shall come high to offer the offerings of the Lord made by fire. He had a blemish. He shall not come an eye to offer the bread of his God he shall eat the bread of his God both of the most of the most holy and of the, the and of the holy that's in the book of Leviticus chapter 21 verse 21 to 22 and Christ is the great sacrifice Christ is the Christ 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 is the great sacrifice Christ in Christ's word and ordinances the feast upon the sacrifice that Christ is the bread of life we're going to go to the book of John, chapter 6, verse 35 and 48. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. I am the bread of life. That bread of life, alluding to the tree of life, is the in, in the midst of the Garden of Eden, which was to Adam the seal of that part of the covenant. Do this and live, of which he might eat and live. Christ is the bread of life. For Christ is the fruit of the tree of life. He is the living bread. So Christ explains himself once again. In the book of John, chapter 6, verse 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. That's in the book of John. That's in the book of John, chapter 6, verse 51. Now that concludes this first part of this segment. And in part two, we will continue on from the book of St. John, chapter 6, verse 51. In Christ Jesus' name. May God be the glory.
as I walk, live, and pray in your image and likeness, the fruit of the Spirit. I come in love and leave in peace. Grace and peace and much, much love and blessings to you and your families. Have a blessed day. Grace and peace. Amen.